Data is the new oil and taking your privacy and security seriously is probably the best thing you can do to take some control over the issue. I'm going to talk about my 10 essential privacy tools that I use literally every single day. And I'm holding one right here that I wanna talk about and share with all of you after a quick message from our sponsor. I'm somebody who puts a lot of time into making sure my data is properly organized, that's also in a safe place, and allows me to store my thoughts over time so I can go ahead and reference it for work, for journaling, or for my personal life. And that's where something like Notesnook really comes in handy. Notesnook is open source with end-to-end -end encryption so I can ensure that it's actually protecting my data, keeping me private, and secure, and they have clients available on every major operating system, including a web app, so I never have to worry about if I buy a new laptop with a different operating system or switching between different Linux distributions, or if I'm switching to a different phone, it will always work. It's also become more of a productivity tool competitive to things like Obsidian, so you can actually store your thoughts and almost have a second brain. You can view all the powerful features they support on their website, including the different text formatting options, lists, and even clipping web content to integrate it within your notes. Check out Notesnook. It's completely free to try, so there's really no harm in giving it a shot. It's open source, end-to-end -end encrypted, and you can check them out at the link here on the screen and down in the description. So the first tool is multi-factor authentication, or MFA. Now, the reason why MFA is so powerful is that even in an event where your password gets breached or your email gets breached, you're still safe because MFA gives you that final layer of protection by requiring a second data point for something that only you can have. The two most common multi-factor authentication options, both of which I use on a day-to-day -day basis, is first, security keys. I made a video on security keys and why I switched to them because they are more secure than using something like an authenticator app and they're also phishing resistant. Um, so this means that if somebody sends me an email and they're trying to get into my ProtonMail account, for example, um, my YubiKey will not work in the ProtonMail client if it's not the actual ProtonMail. I have three YubiKeys that I split between different areas in the event that I lose one, and I encourage other people to check them out as well. They're a great multi-factor authentication option, and it's about as secure as it can get. And I'll leave a link to a YubiKey down in the description for you to check them out. Now, not every account supports YubiKeys, and this is where security apps are still kind of king of being a little bit more universal than the security keys. Right now, my personal favorite app is Entei Auth because it's cross-platform, open source, has end-to-end -end encrypted syncing, or the ability to just do offline um, 2FA, which is probably the more secure method for many of you. And their team is really great. So I really enjoy using Entei Auth, and I enjoy using YubiKeys. And those are two things that I literally use every day. You probably saw this coming, but a password manager is another tool that I used. I used KeePass for the longest time, and I still think KeePass is probably one of my favorite password managers because it just does so much, and it's all offline, and I feel like I have the most control over it. Recently, though, I did move to Proton Pass, and the reason for that I kind of laid out in a whole dedicated video, so check that out if you want to see why I used Proton Pass. But kind of the short of it is that it has aliasing directly built into it, and we'll talk about aliasing later in the video. And I just wanted something that synced between my devices a little bit cleaner and nicer and had more universal clients, which KeePass doesn't really offer for the cross-platform folks like myself. I will say those two are kind of my favorites, but I also like Bitwarden and I also like 1Password for very different reasons. And our website details those a little bit more. Really, no matter what you use, the important thing is that you have a method of securely saving and using unique, secure passwords on every single site. So this is one of those rare unscripted videos where I don't really have a script in front of me. I'm just looking directly at the camera, but I did make a few notes of the 10 things so I can remember them. And those are on my phone here. But if I turn it, you're gonna see you don't uh, see the screen anymore. It's a privacy screen protector. So I really enjoy using a privacy screen protector on my phone. It's something I talk about a lot because it just gives me peace of mind in public. Really like screen protectors. I'll leave links to some of the ones I use down in the description. As I showed in this screen here, I use Signal's note to self feature, which reminds me that I use an end-to-end -end encrypted messenger literally every single day. Almost all of my contacts are through Signal. Signal is my end-to-end -end encrypted app of choice, and the reason for that is I find it to be the best balance of security, privacy, and usability versus pretty much the whole competition. Um, you do have things that are more secure and more private than Signal, perhaps arguably like SimpleX and uh, Session and Briar, but I feel like they sacrifice on usability too much to be my daily messenger. Now, if you do use Signal and you want it to be more private and secure, I just recently made a Signal 
hardening guide. So that goes through everything I do to make Signal as secure as you can possibly make it. All right, so the next thing I use is actually one of the most important things I've added to my workflow. And if you saw my review of it originally, you'll know why, and it's my NAS. It doesn't matter which NAS you use, uh, Synology sent me a review unit, and I can have all of my data accessible in one central location that I can pretty much then access from any device I want to. Previously, I used to have a desktop, a laptop, and all these different devices, and I couldn't figure out how to sync between them. How do I store, especially when I make videos like this, terabytes of data between different devices and keep it synchronized? That's what a NAS is for. Completely transformed my workflow. We use it for all our production here, and this video that you're watching was edited from the NAS. Normally, when you self-host something at home, you can access it easily within your network, but once you leave your house, it's really hard to still sync and connect to it unless you open up ports on your network and that has its own problems and security issues that I didn't want to deal with. So I just set up Tailscale. Tailscale just is essentially a VPN connection that lets me directly tunnel into my network at home. It allows me to send files between all my devices. It's kind of like Apple's AirDrop, but cross-platform in a way. So that in itself is also kind of a cool tool I use on a day-to-day -day basis. But my favorite thing is that Tailscale is integrated with Molvat VPN. This is incredible because now you can pretty much get the convenience of connecting to any devices in your house while going through a VPN connection all in one single VPN connection. Super cool, can't speak highly enough of it, and I have a whole saga talking about why I moved to Molvat, and it's because of this workflow. Um, so check out that video if you wanna learn more about why I do that and how it works. We have other VPNs that, if you don't use Tailscale, are also great, like iVPN, ProtonVPN, and Winscribe. We have a whole chart on our website that's open source, and it just has data points for you to see which VPN is best for you at techler.tech slash VPN. All right, browsers. Uh, you probably all use one, and the thing that I love most about the browsers I use, or at least one of them, not the other one, is that uh, it's very familiar to people. So Brave is something I really like to suggest to people because it's very similar to Chrome, it's built on Chromium. All websites should work more or less the same. Um, and as once you disable all the crypto stuff in the browser, uh, it's actually a really nice, really clean experience that doesn't just improve privacy and security, but it also has ad blocking and a lot of other cool features just directly built into it. I use Brave alongside Mulvad. The workflow that I've been using lately is I use Mulvad browser as my default browser because it's uh, pretty much disposable. Uh, everything I do within it is closed once I exit the browser and that's how it's designed to be. And once I have to use something with an account, then I have my Brave with different profiles um, and everything's already logged in within those Brave profiles depending on what I'm using it for. So I really like the flexibility of having more than one browser because I just don't think one browser is quite perfect enough to be used for everything. There are many other private browsers out there that we have on our website. So if you wanna learn about more of them, check them out on our website. Those are just two of the ones that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. If I uploaded this video, which I did if you're watching it, so I don't know why I said that, but uh, I uploaded it through Chrome. And the reason why is because Chrome just works better with everything that Google makes. Whether or not that's intentional is an entirely different discussion. But one thing I don't like about Chrome and Safari is that they don't have any kind of privacy extensions really built into them. And that's where I think uBlock Origin and AdGuard are just phenomenal tools that I don't use every day, but when I do use them, they're just incredible tools. uBlock Origin is actually something that I think is the easiest thing that you can do for anybody because if they use Chrome, you only have to switch them off of their browser. You just install uBlock Origin for them and tell them, hey, I'm just gonna install this extension for you. It's literally install and leave it be. Super easy and people actually tend to prefer uh, after it happens because they realize, oh wow, the web's a lot nicer to experience when you're not bombarded with nonsense all day that you block origin and AdGuard prevent from coming up. So I use aliasing services every day. I think it's the number one way to pretty much offload your privacy to first parties who will prevent you from having to leak that information to countless third parties. And what I mean by that is instead of me having to share my email with 50 different websites uh, to order something online or my credit card number to 50 different sites or my phone number, I can just trust one person like privacy.com uh, to pretty much generate cards on 50 different sites for me so that only one provider has to trust has to be trusted with my data. So the services I use on a day-to-day -day basis are privacy.com. It's my favorite aliasing service for payment information. There's a referral link down below. This video is not sponsored by them. I just love them a lot. 
Um, I use ProtonPass, as I already mentioned, which has email aliasing built in. Same thing, affiliate links down below, not sponsored by them. It's just something I really enjoy. And then there's also gonna be MySudo. And MySudo is something I also use every single day. No referral link, I just really like them. There are other aliasing services on our site and there's alternatives to the ones that I just listed. And finally, the last thing in this video, DNS providers. I love NextDNS. I've been using it a lot lately and I talked about NextDNS in a video here. Essentially what it does is it allows you on a DNS level to be able to block any sort of traffic. So as somebody who likes to have a really healthy relationship with the technology I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I like to set up hours where I can access certain websites. Uh, they call them parental controls, but I just call them health controls. They have block lists set up so you can block a lot of the first party tracking done on different operating systems. There's a lot of third party tracking block lists that you can install as well that are continually updated on a practically daily basis. And if you don't like NextDNS, there's also Control D, which a lot of people enjoy and I wanna do a review of soon as well, but I haven't really used it much. So NextDNS is what I'm familiar with and what I'm using. And there's also a referral link for that down in the description as well. But I do have plans to review Control D to see how I like that one as well. The point is using any tool that can modify DNS a little bit is really powerful, whether it's a pie hole, whether it's a DNS provider like the ones I listed, or if you can just use a preset one, like Mulvad has a basic malware a DNS thing that can help prevent malware. Um, and yeah, it's not as sophisticated as making your own block lists and it's not as customizable, but it's something. Those are my 10 things I can't live without. And if you take one of them away from me, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off. So that was kind of my metric of like how to evaluate which 10 services. And again, there's a lot of referral links down in the description that really helps our content out. If you don't like referral links for whatever reason, we have one-time support options, but we also have monthly recurring support options through Patreon and now on our forum. So you can be a tech Lorian and get things like access to our Signal group. Um, so you can chat with me there on Signal and everybody else in the community who's kind of in that exclusive club. I wanna thank our sponsor of this video. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on TechLore. Go check out this video here. It's a really cool deep dive into an interesting topic that I have not picked yet, but it'll be really interesting. So check that out. See you next time.